Dan Perry here with another C++ tutorial for Dan on Tech. In this video we'll look at the time function. Now C++ and C have a number of functions dealing with time. We're only going to look at one of those and later on we may return and look at the others but the function we're going to look at is the time function. Now it has a library, so in order to use the time functions, you must include the library. In C++, that is C time. It's time.h in C, so make sure you have included that in your uh, include statements. Now, I've created a couple of variables, a couple of long integers, an S time, an E time, an EL time that I'm going to use in this example. I've also pre-done part of some C out statements that we're going to use. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is look at using the time function, and I'm going to take the output the value it returns and I'm going to first put it in a the variable s time so s time is going to be equal to the time function and the time function is time and then in parentheses for just returning the value of the time we're going to use the null pointer or null saying a null parameter we're not supplying in anything. There are some other versions of using the time function in which you'll put something else in there. <clears throat> you'll basically put a uh, put an address in there for storing the results. But for our purposes that's all we need. And then I'm going to output that value. So s time and while we're at it, I want to see how big this value is. Um, so if you remember, we've used before the size of to see how big a, a variable is, a, a data type. And so it'll be the size of, and I can either do s time or I'm just going to do the time function. And again, supply it null. And that will return the size of that function, how much memory it stores. So let's go ahead and run that. And we, when we do, we get a time value, this huge numeric value, 13633631353. And then it says size 8, or 8 bytes. Well, the time function returns an integer value, a long integer in this case. Depending on the version of C++ you're using, what you're compiling it for, what platform, it may only be a 4-byte value, but in our case it's a an 8-byte uh, value, so a very large value on it. <coughs> With the time function in the older systems they used 4 bytes, which gave us <coughs> up to a value of 32, uh, or I'm sorry, not 32, 32 bits, which was a little bit above 4 billion clicks or values in that time. Well, what does that number represent? Well, that re number represents the number of seconds that have elapsed since what's called the Unix Epoch. The Unix Epoch was January 1st, 1970. So that's the number of seconds that have elapsed since January 1st, 1970. There was a little worry that in 2038 with the only storing four bits we would have a problem with some systems using that time value but most new systems today use the eight bytes to store the time and by using eight bytes we're not going to run out uh, for thousands of years. So that's, the, again, the number of seconds that have elapsed. Now, what I'm going to use, do with this is that S time was the starting time that I've put in in this case, and we saw that numeric value. Well, I'm going to also calculate an E time or ending time, and the first time through, I'm going to do it, run it just following outputting the value of s time and the value of the size of 
and then we will output that value. And let's run this. And when we run it, it's the same value. Well, that's because this happens so fast that a second has not elapsed when we run it. It is possible that between the start and end time, it could be one second increment if we ran it just in that fraction of a second. But we see this runs very, very fast. So what I'm going to do, just to put a little delay in there, is I'm going to create a for loop that is basically a do-nothing loop. So I'm going to say for i equals 1 i less than um, a billion and then increment i and then I'm just going to end that no, nothing with it all I'm going to do is increment that for loop oh and I've got a comma there and commas instead of semicolon I need to hit the right keys okay and this is just going to be a fairly long delay loop. Well, we'll say long, it's only going to be a few seconds. If we were outputting something to the screen, it would be a very long loop. But now let's run it. And we can see now it hesitates a little bit. And then it comes up and it turned out to be, well, about three seconds difference. And in fact, what we could do is we could, I've got this EL time or elapsed time variable. And I could calculate the elapsed time as being the ending time minus the start time. So we could use this for a timer to see how long things were happening in our computer. If we had a system that took a long time to run, we could use a starting and an ending time to calculate the elapsed time. So here in this case it took four seconds to run it. So we've got our starting time, our ending time, and then the four seconds that was our elapsed time. And this this should illustrate to you how one of the ways we can use the time function. Now, this isn't the only way the time function can be used, and we're going to see in a later video how we'll use the time function along with generating random numbers. Thank you for watching this Dan on Tech video. Please subscribe to this playlist so you don't miss future videos. Please check out and subscribe our other Dan on Tech channel playlists.